Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to um, the meeting for Friday, May 8th, and, uh, and we'll get going. And welcome to all. And right now we have uh, Paul Nesky, uh, Roger, Amy, Angie, Ron, uh, Michael from Green Mountain Access, and uh, Carol Robertson and myself. And Susan. And, and, out. and there you are. You were you were just a little bit off the screen. <laughs> well, there you go. So we don't have Brad. Um, Ron, can you give a um, update from the state EOC since yes. I missed uh, a big chunk of it? Yeah. No, there was a, a, a downsizing of the state emergency operations center. Um, to a certain degree. So they used to be operating seven days a week, pretty much 24 uh, seven. Last week, they uh, reduced their hours to more of a regular shift. Um, so I guess that's the kind of the, the feeling that everybody's getting. They're just coming off the strict emergency and getting uh, things going again, relieves some of the emergency response decisions. So as far as, regards to the town there we were having regular updates with uh, the state eoc and then there was a local official webinar and there was another one for emergency management directors and i'm pretty sure they've combined all of those into uh, a thursday at two o'clock session for local officials uh, the governor's still doing his uh, three times a week at 11 o'clock on monday wednesday and friday and again today he's uh, picking at another spot to loosen up which was daycares and some school direct directives there really has been no change uh, in the last week or two to the municipal operations uh, vlct is holding a webinar on monday at two which is I, I think it's probably going to be a pretty good one uh, for local officials specifically how you run local government public meetings uh what what do you do if you have public facilities etc so um, that will help kind of tie this together the um next step that we're looking at and the select board talked about today is sort of uh stabilizing things for a while so the, the way you do that is to start putting things in writing so last monday all the town staff completed their mandatory training which was uh, set up by vosha so those certificates were done on monday today the select board approved the covid 19 exposure control work plan which kind of itemizes and details all the things we've been talking about for the last month so eventually i'll publish that and get it out to all the departments um, within that document are some responsibilities for department heads uh, primarily on enforcement of the PPE protocols, uh, masks and separation and how you run your departments uh, in a safe way. That would include how construction sites are managed, et cetera. So I think probably we're okay. I think people have you know, been brought along slowly on this, but we, we do have to have the plan adopted, which the select board did this morning. And I I think that's it. I'm not expecting too much more in the way of major changes to the town government going forward. I mean, the, the last one would be, you know, no masks needed kind of thing in the in the public realm. But I don't see that happening very quickly, but we will keep monitoring it. And that's about it. OK, thanks, Ron. Uh, we just had a caller check in. Um, can you identify yourself, please? Yes, it's uh, Roger Marku. Hi, Roger. Hi. Okay. Uh, Ron just gave a report, uh, an update from the state EOC and um, from the selectmen's meeting uh, this morning. Um, so, um, Susan, do you have anything to update us with? Uh, no, not really. I think Rob's covered it pretty well. Okay, great. Um, Roger. 
Um, do you have anything uh, to update us from the sheriff's department or or law enforcement in general? Right, things seem to be um, uh, you know pretty steady. We're seeing more and more traffic out there. We're seeing evidence that uh, you know uh, uh, people that that are authorized are out there um, you know conducting their business. So that's that's a good sign. Um, we're having um, a hard time with a particularly one individual that's been hitting uh, Johnson and, 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 you know, Morrisville and all around, um, just a repeat offender that uh, um, our challenge right now with those type of people is, is that they're not even, the courts aren't even having arraignments until June. So there's no deterrence. There's no judge ordered conditions. Uh, unless it's a very, very serious crime. So, so we're dealing with that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, it, drug trafficking has not slowed down. So, uh, we're very busy with that as well, uh, those investigations. But other than that, I think that, uh, uh, you know, the evidence that we see being out every day is, is that people are, are, uh, um, you know, uh, proceeding ahead with great resolve and, uh, and, uh, um, our our cases are actually down. So, and I think our 911 calls are still around uh, 80% of what they usually are for this time. So, okay, great, thanks, Roger. Um, and um, now I guess we'll get uh, a few updates. We don't have any really guests. Um, uh, Carol. Uh, do you have anything from uh, the village to update folks with? Well, I'll ditto what Ron said. Our COVID plan will be adopted on May 13th. We are all well, thank God. We are in good shape, managing as best we can from our various hideouts. Um, I need to tell everybody that uh, Nick Minosh will begin wastewater construction for field two. Next week, he'll start setting up the trailer. And so far, we don't have any impediments. We anticipate beginning water construction in June. And everything is in line for that. So uh, watch for trailers and watch for equipment and people. Um, they also have their COVID plan, which been, has been approved by the state. Signage should go up quickly, and I feel like it'll be a smooth construction project for both. Okay, great. Thanks, Carol. Um, Amy, do you have anything to update us with? Um, just a little bit. On Friday next week, we'll resume our curbside service. We have put together our procedures for how that's going to work in our schedule. Um, the state Department of Libraries uh, let us know today that our interlibrary loan courier service is also going to resume on May 18th and um, or the week of May 18th and provided us with some suggestions. Um, the D Department of Libraries is a state department, but because we don't receive any direct funding and there are no real guidelines from the state that we are mandated to follow. Um, they can't direct us, but they can give us guidance, which we all, all public libraries in Vermont are in desperate need of. Um, so they provided us with some guidance and suggestions about how to safely manage um, those deliveries. And we can opt out. We don't have to, we don't have to accept those deliveries at this time if we don't want to. So the library is um, gently easing back into the curbside on Friday the 15th, and um, that's kind of our baby step forward. And our uh, Jason Broughton, the state librarian, also just kind of let us know today that when the governor starts talking about um, how to reopen retail businesses, that will probably be sort of an indication that libraries may be next or may follow along with um, with guidance for when retail business is open because it, it's m library service is a little bit more like retail than it is like other kinds of um, businesses that have been allowed to reopen. However, um, we just we're just going to proceed with caution and take very small steps forward, knowing that if we take big steps forward, we're probably going to have to take some back and 
also knowing that if any of our staff gets sick, then we pretty much have to, we wouldn't be able to operate anyway. So we're just we're just proceeding a little bit with caution. However, we are all working behind the scenes and and that's going to kind of step ahead step up a little bit more as the the weeks go forward. So um, our wish tree is out front. So if anybody wants to make a wish on our annual wish tree, there's an online form. So that's just something that we're doing to something sweet that we're trying to continue to connect people with the library and the community. And there are lots of wishes on the tree that are wishing for COVID to be over, but there are also some that are wishing for pets and wishing for um, all kinds of other little things that kids and adults wish for that aren't necessarily COVID related. So it's nice to see a combination of both of those things out there. And um, just want to thank everybody for the work that they're continuing to do. Oh, I'm also, I also attend a monthly Lamoille Integrated Networking Team, um, different health and human services organizations throughout Lamoille County and Lamoille Valley, really. Um, and so and I am getting a lot of good information from different organizations on how they're helping their uh, clients and the people that they serve. So the library is able to sort of tap into um, to helping them with what they're doing. So while we can't directly allow people in our building and probably won't for a while, we are partnering with other organizations. And I guess that's just one of the benefits how over the years we've been we've been building relationships with people and it's paying off now where we can't necessarily provide those services ourselves. We can help our partners do that. So so that feels good to be to be helping in a way. So that's I think that's it. That's my library update. Great. Thanks, Amy. Uh, sounds good. Um, Angie, can you give us an update of Hyde Park Helpers? Yes. Hi, everybody. The Hyde Park, Hyde Park Helpers have been pretty quiet this week. We've only had one shopping request, which I will take care of um, tonight, this evening. And other than that, we're still servicing about 16 families and most will reach out on a weekly basis, some bi-weekly. And then um, we're hoping to pick up some of the people returning to Vermont that have to quarantine for 14 days, but we haven't had any of those yet either. Maybe Paul can help us out with that. But that's where we're at. We're still running and everything's going smoothly. Okay, great. Thanks, Angie. Uh, yep. Paul. Yes, good afternoon. Well, picking up a bit with, as Angie said, you know, we've here in the park, we've still got a couple people, three that I can think of that aren't, haven't returned yet from their winter solstice and um, taking their due time, apparently. Uh, and, and after the snowstorm we're going to be having uh, later tonight and tomorrow, I, I can see why they're waiting. Um, when they do arrive, you know, we'll uh, put them wise to the, and, and we have already, but just we'll remind them again that uh, the helpers are there uh, to help them get situated so they don't have to uh, uh, bring attention to themselves by uh, going about town shopping. Uh, there's no need of it uh, as long as we're we've got the program in place for them now. The um, project that the town was working on with the the mask uh, distribution um, worked well for us here. Uh, the ladies in the park that were sewing uh, got busy, and uh, we managed to accumulate a hundred hundred masks rather quickly. Um, there's still more that I have to deliver. Whenever they, um, Susan Carroll or, or the other distributors desire to have them, so we can uh, we can continue that project uh, uh, until there doesn't appear to be as a, a need. I also have um, some hand sanitizer remaining from the project, where our health and wellness group uh, uh, purchased some uh, about a month ago. Uh, so there's still some remaining from that supply. So if there's a need for that, um, when they're distributing masks, uh, we can make the hand sanitizer available to them at the same time. Other than that, I, I think we're we're pretty clear here. At uh, things are still uh, we're still here. Uh, no one in the park has been confirmed with the COVID, and that's that was our goal. Um, 
our first goal was to maintain a healthy atmosphere, in particular with the COVID. Um, but we're not uh, disarming ourselves that that's the only we're at, we're at issue with anything that has to do with people's health, and that includes their mental health. Um, and of course, the other issues that we're always keenly aware of, which is the drug issue that still pervades uh, uh, throughout throughout the country. Um, and, and we're not eliminated from it. Um, and so we're always concerned uh, for that and anything that we can do to aggressively help with the process of elimination or uh, would be happy to be a part of it. So, um, yeah, I'll close with that. Thank you. Okay, Paul, thank you, Paul. Is, Paul, this is Susan. Do you have, is the hand sanitizer like in regular size bottles or did you guys buy a bunch and rebottle it? No, we bought it at bottled. Um, okay. They come in uh, yeah, four ounce bottles. Okay. And how many of those do you have? Oh, I probably have 25 of them, I think, 30, somewhere along in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll come by too. <laughs> The help I'm getting is like, well, you can buy it by the gallon. I'm going, I don't want a gallon. <laughs> right. Yes, we, we did buy a gallon. So we, we have a big bottle here now, and we've put it into smaller bottles. Um, so let me, and, and I tell Paul, I missed, I, I, I missed my pickup with the masks. I thought you were going to let me know if you had more masks. And went, oh, okay. <laughs> So if, when we need some more, I'll get them. I'm closer than, and except if it's a nice day, it's a nice drive up to Carol's, but well, it is. I'm closer, yeah. so whatever. Yeah, it is pretty up there. We'll take the plows up tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I think they will. I took the snow tires off the car today, so I, I think we'll probably get a lot more than the two inches than they, that they <laughs> said. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, uh, Susan, I'll share with you on the on the sanitizer. We're not uh, we're not selling it. We're we're accepting donations, but we're not. You know, if anybody okay. is in need of it, they're welcome to have it. Yeah, well, I'm, we're happy to make a donation. I just look for a reasonable size to use. It's so much easier to use with Bill. Um, yeah. Being in a wheelchair, it's just it's a lot easier to have a small bottle to use. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll 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 reach out to you after and come up and it, it, again we find when we uh, when we when we do the masks and deliver the, the mask sometimes it's funny somebody will see me coming and say you know I'll leave it at the door or something and a door will open and a hand comes around the door <laughs> say, well, okay there's the bag <laughs> yep and uh, so I still have uh, quite a few masks that I'm able to uh, give out. And I think, Susan, you have a reasonable stock as well right now. Yeah, yeah, I have I have a reasonable stock. Um, one of the, on a, 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 a different group dealing with the, with the regional hunger group, um, one of the things, and, and we've seen, um, you know, uh, the other group that has been doing the businesses and stuff, they were reaching out and looking for a bunch of masks because with people going back to doctor's offices, they wanted to make sure that everybody had masks. And I think they're looking at, at sort of putting some masks in doctor's offices, um, I, I, uh, which of course is then, you know, it, there'll certainly be some Hyde Park people and kids, but um, uh there's also the um, um, the WIC program is doing a special thing with moms and kids, and uh, and they wanted to, and right now they like need maybe a dozen masks. And again, there might be some Hyde Park folks and might not be, but if we have if we have plenty, if we could give them a dozen masks so that folks that show up can get a mask if they if they don't have one. Um, if that had worked for people, because right now we seem to have plenty. I think when we do, when we put up the poster in the post office, and um, uh, we and we do, uh, we got the okay. We're going to do a postcard mailing to everybody in Hyde Park. I expect it will probably 
pick up again, but we seem to be in we seem to be in pretty good um, shape. And our volunteers, besides besides Paul and all those good folks up there, there are a couple of other folks that are that are ready to gear up and do a bunch of masks if we need them. So I think we're in good shape. Um, I got Amy. I know you talked the uh, the lady from the Johnson Library called me and we had a good conversation. She was interested in this project and how we were going about reaching out, getting masks to people. And uh, one of the places they were interested in, because of course they have a market in town, so Sterling Market, um, and they are looking at wanting to have, um, and Sterling Market had agreed that um, they would be willing to, to sort of keep a cache of masks and give them out to people. I said, Paul, as I remember you had said, and other people have said, it doesn't work to put out a big thing of masks and let people choose. That just doesn't work. Um, people either get pawing through them or people are going to take handfuls of them or whatever. So we need to keep it on sort of the personal side. But um, I, and I think as we get more and more open, I think more people are going to be um, asking for masks. So I think Johnson through the library is looking at a way of gearing up to do it. Uh, Susan, on this, on the I, on the mission or task we have before us for the mailing, I we had talked to Hyde Park helpers a month ago about a mailing. So I guess this is more for, well, more for everybody, but specifically for Angie. Um, it's a we do have room if you want to call it that on the on this postcard design we've been working on. Is there something that Hyde Park helpers would want to put on there or a link or something like that uh, as long as we're going to do the mailing? Yeah, yeah, we can. That would be awesome. Um, I I'll, can I'll, see. I'll send you what we have and then you could look at it and mark it up or something and then we'll just go back and forth. Okay, that would be perfect. Sure. Does anybody else have any ideas to add to the mailing notices or anything else from the community since we're going to be doing this to every mailbox perhaps just uh, asking people if they have any needs that are that are not being met during uh, this covid crisis call carol other, other than financial <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, Ron, I don't know if I missed this, but if on the mailing, maybe our website could be on there. I'm going to be linking a lot of uh, the resources that the Lint group has been putting out there for people who aren't getting their needs met. Um, people like job support and uh, mental health support yeah. and um, things like that. So we'll have a link on our website to all of those sort of resources and also um, different organizations are putting out individual grants where people can can maybe get some financial help for some of those short-term needs so um, yeah, e email me what you what, yeah email me what you, you think yeah i will just a link to our website and then i'll i'll people can get the information from there okay thank you thank you okay. um i don't know see that we have any other offline tasks or announcements um does anybody have anything else to add before we end our meeting? Nothing. All right. Well, with that, thank you everybody for attending today's meeting. And uh, if we don't speak before next week, we'll we'll talk to you again next Friday. Thank you, everybody. That sounds thank good. You. People, Thanks. people stay warm this weekend. Yeah. <laughs>